Welcome back, Love Nation. We are about to get into part two of the case against DJ Academics. These documents are very, very shocking and stunning to me. It is a very triggering, and I am going to be reading these documents in parts. And again, I just want to forewarn everybody that this is quite shocking. Um, again, this is part two. We're going to get straight into it. If you did not see part one, please subscribe and go back and listen to part one. Part three of this is coming shortly. So right now, let's just get straight into part two, the continuation of the documents. Like, share, subscribe, and let's just get straight into this. Part two of the case against DJ Academics lawsuit. And we are going to get more into the triggering area of this case. And again, I will be um, changing some of the words around because of YouTube's parameter. But please feel free to pause and read it yourself as I have to edit what I say. Let's get straight into part two right now, you guys. According to Ms. Abashi... John Doe 1 would not take no for an answer and began putting his hands on her. He eventually picked her up and tossed her into the pool, adjacent to the hot tub. According to Miss Abashi, she was disorientated, had trouble breathing, and struggled to get out of the pool for fear of losing her life. As she attempted to crawl out of the pool, while still disorientated and struggling to breathe, John Doe 1 put his hands on her. He forcibly removed anything that she was wearing and then put his hands on her body and proceeded to touch her in a way she did not want to be touched. Miss Abashi did not consent. In fact, due to the spirits and whatever pharmaceuticals was placed in the spirits she was not in the right mindset to consent to anything of adult activities that were being performed on her by John Doe 1. As Miss Abashi has memories of fighting off her attackers but feeling extremely weak. As John Doe put his hands on her, Miss Abashi would later learn that John Doe 2 was watching from the side and took off his clothes in the bushes nearby. As Miss Abashi would later learn that as she laid almost lifeless on the concrete, John Doe 1 was standing in the pool while shifting her lifelessness back and forth on the concrete. John Doe 2 was taking off his clothes in the bushes and would soon join in on this ambush to Miss Abashi. The two men then proceeded to put their hands on Miss Abashi. Upon information and belief, this was witnessed by the police when the surveillance footage was first recovered. As John Doe 1 finished doing what he was doing, Miss Abashi he then allowed John Doe 2 to do the same thing. According to Miss Abashi, lying on the concrete was the last memory she had of that part of the night. She recalls going in and out of consciousness and does not recall ever entering the home. Whatever pharmaceuticals John Doe 1 and John Doe 2 slipped into Miss Abashi's spirit, negatively impacted her memory and caused her to lose consciousness. According to Miss Abashi, she recalls being awakened with no clothes on in a bed, what she believed was DJ Academic's bedroom. She believed it to be around 4 a.m. She was awoken by Mr. Allen, savagely pulling at her hair, putting his hands on her, and doing things to her over and over again against her will. According to Miss Abashi, DJ Academics was relentless. He tried to do things to her from the back and was frustrated because she kept squirming and moving due to the discomfort and pain. As a result, 
Miss DJ Academics proceeded to aggressively put his hands on her. Upon information and belief, Miss Mr. Allen, who is DJ Academics, was not using any sort of protection when he did this to her, as evident by the purported discovery of his body fluids in the kit that the police performed on Miss Abashi a few hours after this incident. Miss Abashi recalls begging DJ Academics to stop. She recalls her voice was faint as she continued to drift in and out of consciousness. Miss Abashi remembers crying for most of this, but losing her ability to move physically. Miss Abashi eventually gave up fighting in hopes that DJ Academics would finish quickly. Miss Abashi recalls DJ Academics saying, Open your mouth as he pulled her hair. He said, open your mouth. I want to do things with your mouth. This was her last memory of what happened with him. According to Miss Abashi, she woke up confused the following morning and searched for DJ Academics. According to Miss Abashi, she looked around the house and found him in the basement on his computer. According to Miss Abashi, she sat on the floor next to him and he asked her if she knew that his friends had did things to her, to which she said no. He kept asking, are you sure? He told her everything was right, all right, and that he was good if she was cool. According to Miss Abashi, she was baffled and in disbelief. According to Miss Abashi, DJ Academics then asked her to follow him into another room where he showed her the contents of a small trash can that had appeared to be vomit in it and two um, protections, wrappers. And he asked her, you don't remember this? Miss Abashi was still in disbelief. She had zero recollection of ever being in that room the prior night. According to Miss Abashi, it appeared that after John Doe 1 and John Doe 2 did what they did by the pool, the pair had taken her into another room in the house and continued to do what they did. Mr. Allen then handed her the can of vomit and asked her to throw it away. Miss Abashi then asked for her phone and Mr. Allen, who is DJ Academics, went to retrieve it. He continued telling her everything was all right if she was okay. At this point, she was still in disbelief and asked for proof of what occurred. According to Miss Abashi, DJ Academics showed her the surveillance footage of John Doe 1 doing what he did and skipped through the video. According to Miss Abashi, as she watched the video, she looked like she was just lying there lifeless, which did not sit right with her. According to Miss Abashi, DJ Academics then assured her that everything was okay, and as he spoke, he noticed Miss Abashi's demeanor began to change. DJ Academics then hastily told her that his mother was on the way and would be there shortly and proceeded to order her a lift back to Pennsylvania. According to Miss Abashi, DJ Academics asked her where her clothing was. She responded that she had it. He stood up there with suspicious look on his face. Miss Abashi later learned from the police that DJ Academics disposed of several items, bed sheets, etc., at the dumpster near his offices. Presumably, DJ Academics was attempting to destroy the evidence of what happened to Miss Abashi. Miss Abashi began feeling uneasy. She felt that Mr. Allen was attempting to take her clothes for some reason, presumably to hide whatever evidence she may have of what happened to her the night before. As these thoughts ran through her mind, so as not to alarm Mr. Allen, who was DJ Academics, Miss Abashi remained composed as she waited for her lift to arrive. Mr. Abashi said goodbye to DJ Academics and left his home. 
According to Miss Abashi, she called Deja Academics while in the lift, asking for more, more asking more questions. He then began to blame her and ridicule her. Still trying to get answers, she pleaded with him, even apologizing for what occurred. She was desperate to learn of the series of events that had led to DJ Academics and his accomplices doing what they did to her. According to Miss Abashi, she asked Mr. Allen, Well, you said it was both of them, but you only showed me one. Can you send me proof of this? To which DJ Academics sent a screenshot of what happened to Miss Abashi while she was laying on a concrete in front of her pool with John Doe 1 doing what he was doing and John Doe 2 sitting uh, in a position near her face, presumably with his man parts near her mouth. I'm going to stop right there, you guys. We are going to get into part three in a moment. Please like, share, and subscribe.